in the last stream, we were working on killing any and every husk that appeared in our base, but more importantly, we were also working on setting up our first bits of refined storage automation. We got our first crafter and our pattern grid, and we also added crafters to one of our alloy smelters and our mechanical squeezer. You can see here that between streams, I have done a little bit of work here, crafting up many more alloy smelters, because as I mentioned at the end of the last episode, we are going to need to do a lot of alloy smelting to complete this pack. There is a ton of alloys to be made. We need end steel, we need dark steel. And then if I type in alloy here, we need all of these alloys. We need copper alloys, energetic alloys, vibrant alloys, redstone alloys, conductive alloys, and pulsating alloys. They're all required in copious amounts to complete the pack. And so I figured that having one alloy smelter or almost one alloy smelter per resource would make it just so much faster for us to get those resources. And we also, of course, in the last episode, were working on the new melon setup over here, which has been chugging away since the end of the last stream. And we now have 4,700 melon slices, effectively 4,700 melon seeds worth of melon slices. And between streams, I have gone ahead and developed a few new chickens. So first things first, I got two more iron chickens. We now have three of these, three 10, 10, 10 iron chickens. This wasn't too difficult. We did have to spend 250 iron on getting a second 10, 10, 10 iron chicken. But as soon as you have two 10, 10, 10 chickens of a specific type, like iron, you can then just breed them together. And because of their 10, 10, 10 nature, their cooldown is super low. And so if I were to, for example, take one of these iron chickens over to here, you'll see I have another iron chicken ready to go. You can put these down. You can give them both a melon seed. That produces a baby 10, 10, 10 iron chicken. And that baby only takes 120 seconds to grow into an adult. And these guys have a 30 second cooldown. So they can make another 10, 10, 10 iron chicken in 30 seconds. And of course, we can use melon seeds to speed up the development of the smaller chicken. And so at this point in time, we can really make as many 10, 10, 10 iron chickens as we like and use them to develop really as much iron as we like. That's exactly what we're doing. Uh, I've also gone ahead and of course set up the ancient chicken. He's good to go. I've moved the copper and coal chickens over to here just so that all of our iron chickens are kind of right next to each other in the middle. I did go ahead and get a glowstone chicken. This one was a real pain in the backside because it turns out that you can't use glowstone dust to make a glowstone chicken. You have to use glowstone blocks to make a glowstone chicken. And so we had to get 250 glowstone blocks in order to get the glowstone chicken. But thankfully, it wasn't too difficult uh, with the alloy smelter over here. One thing we did do between streams is we did invest in 24 of these vibrant alloy grinding balls, which are fairly easy to make. It's just a vibrant alloy because these allow us to get eight glowstone per dullstone as opposed to four. So that effectively doubles the amount of glowstone that you get from each dullstone, which made it substantially easier for us to get the 1000 glowstone, AKA 250 glowstone blocks required to get the uh, glowstone chicken. And then finally, I also got a quartz enriched iron chicken as well. Now that we have all the iron, spending a bit of it on quartz enriched iron wasn't too bad. And so we fed 250 quartz enriched iron to this chicken. And now we're generating all of these resources passively so that hopefully we don't have to manually make them going forward. And so the plan for today's stream is going to be to try and complete the end steel and neutron collector quest lines. One other thing I have done real quick, actually, is I have run some trim over to our obsidian drawer and to our mineral drawer. I've also upgraded the mineral drawer here to a compacting drawer so that the mineral is available in both block and crystal form. And I've also doubled up the number of fluid generators here so that we now have the same amount of water and lava being produced so that now we're producing the obsidian faster and we don't really have that much of an excess of water. And the way I've done that, by the way, we already had trim behind here for uh, all of these drawers. I just put a bit more dark oak trim under the stairs. And then you'll see here, if you look at the top there, this is marble, this is trim. So uh, if I break this, it does take a little while because I should be doing this with an X, but uh, under here, is dark oak trim that dark oak trim runs down and along and i guess you don't actually get your trim back if you break it with an x that is my mistake thankfully we did make some excess uh, again just like with anything else you can craft the uh, framed trim and then just craft it with whatever block you want and it will look like that block and then i've just run that along all the way to here and then it goes kind of that way to get to the mineral and then all the way along here and then that way to get to the obsidian and so all of those are now connected up and if we check in here you can see the obsidian and the mineral nice 
That's ideal because it now means that we can automate things like end steel because the end steel requires obsidian, the dark steel also requires obsidian, and so we do need a lot of obsidian for that, but we can actually automate those resources. Now, over here, things are currently not online, and that is because we have not connected them up. The reason I've not connected them up is that I want to craft one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more crafters to get this going. One thing I did start working on down here that is now done is I did start working on producing 250 silicon so that we could get a silicon chicken. This also wasn't too bad. It was just a case of crafting 250 silicon blend, which is just a ton of sand, a little bit of gold, and 125 nether quartz. We've got like nearly a thousand nether quartz, I think. And so this really wasn't too difficult. And then we just run it all through the charger and we're good to go. And so now we can just go ahead and once again, grab one of our 10, 10, 10 chickens. Boom. Pump this guy full of silicon. And boom, we have ourselves a silicon chicken. Nice. We do have a spare stasis chamber over here. Let's go ahead and whack this guy in. It is the wrong way around, which I do every single time. Let's do this and this. Let's go ahead and lock the drawer as per usual. Uh, we'll throw the silicon in the top and ideally we'll also put some feathers in the bottom there as well because i believe feathers are produced by every single chicken i did also set up a little bit of a grass patch over here to make it a little easier for us to get the uh, the grass required for the stasis chambers that wasn't too difficult actually let me do this and let me just check that you're set to extract which you are fantastic so that's basically good to go the uh, grass blocks are just dirt and grass and so we just crafted up five of these place them down and then filled the rest in with dirt and that means that now going forward if we do want to get more grass for more stasis chambers. We can just take some of our bone meal and of course a pair of shears. We can just bone meal the grass and boom, we have more grass ready to go. Nice. And of course we could use that to make even more grass if we wanted to. And I think I might, I think I might put down some grass in like the sections around the uh, the cacti here. I think that could look quite nice, but it's just a little bit easier than using the moss blocks that we were using previously because the moss blocks, we didn't really have that many of them. It doesn't spread as easily. And it also produces a lot of stuff that's not grass, which makes it less likely that you actually do get grass. And so it's all kind of a bit of a pain. Anyway, let me quickly see if we can't make like seven more crafters. I think at this point in time, we should have the ability to make these fairly easily. So we need more processes. And that kind of leads me to another thing. I do want to automate today the, uh, the inscriber here. And so it might not be a terrible idea to quickly get a second inscriber and place both of these down. The reason that I want two inscribers uh, i'll put them down like maybe here and here the reason we want two of these i think we want to have one of them set up to automatically make the pressed silicon using the silicon press and the other one i think can basically make everything else and in fact i might temporarily steal these two crafters here and get that set up first so that we can set up kind of the crafting of crafters and therefore we don't have to uh, kind of manually do that going forward so if we do this and this we can connect both of these up with a cable to the back and we should have some refined storage cable pretty close by we of course have the cable right here but this does go a weird way about it i'm actually not quite sure i think it goes i think it comes straight along here so in fact i think yeah it's right there fantastic so if we do this and this and this that's going to bring the crafters online and then i think what we should be able to do for this crafter here that has the uh, inscriber press with the inscriber silicon press in it, we should just be able to teach our system over here with ideally another pattern. And uh, it does appear that we are out of patterns now. And so we are gonna have to get another batch of those. Thankfully, super easy to make. We'll do maybe 10 for now and throw them in. We should be able to teach our system how to make the pressed silicon. And I am gonna make sure that we use this silicon from refined storage, just because that is the silicon that we're gonna be producing with our chicken in code. And we can go ahead and place that in here like that. And now as soon as this gets power, I think that should be good to go in terms of producing silicon. We just need some kind of impulsor, of course, to pull the final product out. And then the same is kind of true for the other inscriber as well in that uh, I think if we type in processor here, we should just be able to go ahead and teach it how to make the three different tiers of processor. This used to be a lot more complicated Oh, chat is right. I have made a mistake here. Let me put these three in. These will work. This one won't work because I did not adjust the recipe. Right here, it's going to think that it has to send silicon and an inscriber press. We want to get rid of the inscriber press. For that, just shift left click. It gets rid of it. Re-encode. And now we're just telling it to send one silicon and you should get back a printed silicon. That's the recipe that we want to, uh, to place in here. These used to be a lot more difficult to work with. It used to be the case that you had to send 
specific items to specific sides on the inscriber, but I believe in the newer versions of Applied Logistics, this should work and it should be substantially easier. Now, in terms of importing, last episode, we put an importer on the alloy smelter and we put an importer on the mechanical squeezer. But if we keep doing that, we're going to need a lot of importers, which is fine, but we can do this in a much easier way if we just get one single chest that we use to import everything. And we can then just use some item conduits to pull everything to that chest. So you'll see I've already placed some item conduits along the back of these alloy smelters here. The idea is that we're gonna keep running those item conduits, which I believe I have more of in here. I do indeed. We're gonna keep running those conduits along like this and around into the chest, right? And the idea is that we can set all of these to extract apart from the one that's on the chest. And that way, everything made by all of these alloy smelters gets sent around to the chest. Same is true for the uh, mechanical squeezer as well. And then we just put one importer on the chest and that's gonna import everything. And then we can also do the same thing here with the inscribers. If we do something like this, and I'm gonna go down just so that we don't have a rug pipe sticking out, but if we do this and this, we could then kind of run that up and around to the bottom of this chest as well. Something like that. And if we set both of these to extract here and here, I think that should just work. We'll then place one importer down like this. We're almost certainly going to want to make that importer faster because it's gonna be receiving a lot of items and it's gonna to need to import very quickly. But I think that should mostly work. Now we just need to get power to these two guys. And much like we've done before, uh, by the way, the power for these is underground. I moved the, uh, the battery down here. So the battery's here with the uh, logic cable and the uh, omnidirectional connector. But uh, I think we might just get another omnidirectional connector and kind of place it here between these two because that seems like it's gonna be the easiest way to do it without running a horrible cable all over the place. Okay, so I made my first set of three here. I'm gonna make another set to give us five in total. That's gonna to mean it's just much easier in the future for us to add more power without having to run horrible cables all over the place. So these are all group 57, which is fantastic. We now just need some regular cable as well as another energy exporter. I think we have managed to use all of our energy interfaces. That is completely fine. Making another RF battery is easy enough. Making another energy interface, therefore also easy enough. And boom, we can then go ahead and make another energy exporter. Do wanna make sure we have a variable card with us and we can then go ahead and just place this down. Actually, I want two of these now that I think about it. Again, thankfully, very easy to make because we're gonna put one down right about here. And I did have to temporarily move the inscriber because we needed to make more Fluix to make more Chorus Root to make that omnidirectional connector. But if we put this back down here, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. And then we do need one more of these as well, actually, so that we can connect both of those to power. And at that point, I think we are basically good to go chat. A little bit of a convoluted setup, but I do believe that's gonna make it a lot easier for us to produce some of these processes going forward. Let's give it a try. So those are connected up. Back over here, if I now type in processor, it shows that I can craft it. So let's say that I wanted to craft this one. Let's say I want to craft five of them, start. It says it's missing the raw processor. That makes sense. Our system currently only knows how to make seeds. If we go ahead and type in uh, processor again, we can quickly teach our system how to craft the raw basic, the raw improved, and the raw Advanced, nice. Now, we're gonna have to go further, of course. I do think that the silicon should be interchangeable. And so, maybe not, you know, we do have this exact box ticked, which is um, maybe not ideal. So you know what, let me untick exact, re-encode. Because if you leave exact ticked, it means it's gonna try and get this specific piece of silicon. Whereas if you untick exact, it will use any silicon, or ideally it should use any silicon that is possible to use. And then the final piece here should just be to teach it how to make the process of binding because that should really be the only thing that it doesn't currently know how to make in that equation. So now, if we try this again, let's say I wanted five of these advanced processes, start and start. Over here, we should see this inscriber, look at that, begin making the stuff. Fantastic, of course, we do wanna get our acceleration cards in there and we should also probably look at making some more acceleration cards. Thankfully, they're not that difficult at this point in time to make. Do we have what it takes to make I guess four more of these ideally, we totally do. And then if we go into Fluix here, which I think we do, fantastic, we can then fill both of these inscribers with acceleration cards to make them just that bit faster. Oh, never mind, they hold four, not three. I thought they only held three. Uh, does this work? Did I set that to extract? I did not, that's my bad. Uh, that's because I broke it and replaced it. If we do this, I'm hopeful it pulls them out, fantastic. And then 
is basically those processes automated. So let me uh, undo that. I meant to put down marble and not omnidirectional connectors. But uh, if we replace down the marble like so, we should now be able to automate those processes going forward, which means we should also be able to teach our system how to make the crafter. So if we do this and encode, we then do need to teach it how to make the machine casing, easy enough, encode. And we also need to teach it how to make the construction cores and the destruction cores. So for that, we're going to need some more patterns. We could also look at teaching our system how to make the patterns as well. Unfortunately, we don't have any of the higher tier crafters in uh, in this version of Minecraft, so we only have the basic crafter. Uh, sometimes you can use an add-on mod that gives you iron, gold, diamond, and netherite crafters that are uh, much larger and much faster. For now, though, we're going to have to stick with the basic crafter for our construction core and for our destruction core. And with all of these in here, that does fill up this crafter. So now if we want to teach more recipes, we'll have to put down another crafter. But I do believe that we should now be able to just request crafters. So let's say I wanted seven of these. Look at that. It's going to do a lot of crafting. There's a lot of stuff that it needs to craft but it should just make it happen. Five of them should get taken care of pretty quickly. But uh, if we go check over here, we should see these guys plunking away, making stuff happen, which is very good. I'm very happy about that. Uh, we should also look at getting two more acceleration cards there as well, just to see if we can't max out the speed entirely on that front. What are we missing? Just two more of these. That's completely fine. We do have more of those improved processes. Fantastic. We'll drop that in over here and this just makes our life so much easier because now going forward any crafters we need we can just request and look at that we got seven crafters nice okay so let's do one two three four five six and i'm gonna do this one over here seven for now um although i think basically right away here we should go ahead and whoops we request two more crafters just so that we can get these final two connected up because that way we're not going to need to run our cable too far to get all of these connected so here we are out of silicon, which is unfortunate. Our silicon chicken is working, but uh, not really working as fast as I'd like. It's not the end of the world. We can, of course, get some sand here and just kind of throw that into the sand mill. And we could also potentially look at maybe teaching our system how to do this as well, like how to turn sand into silicon. It's not guaranteed. Wait, am I smelting this? No, I'm not. Oh, I've got smooth sand, so that's, what, that's why this is not the right stuff. Hold on, let me put this back. I think I might have used too much of our sand in between streams yeah we only got 517 left i mean it's not terrible we can obviously just go and mine more sand if we need to but uh, if we do this that's hopefully going to get us some more sand and real quick here one thing i am going to do i think i'm going to make some more capacitors right now we have two capacitors we have a basic capacitor and we have this one loot capacitor which has a base modifier of 2.5 however we can craft these octanic capacitors which have a base modifier of three so they're even faster than this, uh, this loot capacitor. And I think ideally we want to have an octatic capacitor in every single one of these machines. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If we can make eight octatic capacitors, that would be fantastic. To make that happen, we need eight basic capacitors. As I mentioned before, right now, we do already have one, that's fine. Although I say eight, I think you might need two. Yeah, you need two per double layer. And then you need two again there. So if we want eight octatic, that means we need 16 double layer, which means we need 32 of the basics. So we actually need a lot more of these. We are out of grains of infinity. However, I have been told by the Twitch chat that if we use obsidian instead of using the grindstone, that we don't actually use the flint. Because right now we take deep slate and we take flint and we right click on the grindstone and it sometimes uses the flint, but it always uses the deep slate. I've been told that if we use obsidian instead, which I'll place down over here for now because I did between streams set up another resource generator for deep slate just for this very purpose. If we take that deep slate and we do this and then we shift right click like this, look at that. It doesn't actually use the flint on our hand, so we don't have to make an infinite amount of flint. We just produce the grains of infinity at the cost of deep slate, which is much, much nicer. And once we've got two more stacks of grains of infinity, we should be able to make quite easily, I think, the uh, 32 basic capacitors we can nice then upgrading those to double layer is going to require 16 powder coal which i think we have and then uh, 32 energetic alloys which we definitely don't have we've got uh, four of those so let's take half a stack of gold let's take half a stack of redstone and let's take half a stack of glowstone you'll see that glowstone chicken already paying for itself we've got over a thousand glowstone at this point let's once again steal this capacitor for now and place it down over here boom boom and boom and then we can do something like this to make that a little bit faster the limiting factor here is definitely the speed at which we're extracting from this battery. So around here, we currently don't have a pipe upgrade in 
this pipe. And you'll see it's transferring 256 redstone flux per tick, despite the fact that we're making like 3,000. So if I put this in, it's now capable of extracting 8,000 redstone flux per tick. And so now we should be able to really accelerate this as much as we like, because we've got way more power coming in. And as soon as we have the 32 energetic alloy, we should be able to do this and this, that gets a 16 double layer. And then to make the eight octatic, we need glowstone and we need vibrant alloy. Right now, we've got seven vibrant alloy. We of course are going to need 16 in total. And so we do actually need, now that I think about it, even more of those energetic alloy, as well as some more of those ender pearl fragments. Let's take a full stack of those. Back over here, let's do this, this, and this. And again, let's give that a quick tap with the timing bottle to make it faster. Once those are done, boom and boom. And again, that's gonna get us all of the vibrant alloy that we need. Nice. Uh, we do wanna make sure this is connected up like this. And of course this is set to extract so that eventually things go around into here. And we're gonna to wanna to put pipe upgrades into these as well to transfer those items out faster to that uh, import chest. But back down here, we should now have everything that we need in order to make eight octatic capacitors. Nice. And then now if we go and put these into these machines, we should hopefully see, and you can just right click these in, which is nice. We should hopefully see them being a lot faster than they were previously, which is good. And with that, I do believe that we're now in a position where we could look to these compressed crafting tables. So down here, let me go ahead and request another crafter because our first crafter is just completely done. It's full. And so we need another one if we're gonna craft more stuff. Again, hopefully doesn't take too long here. Look at that, fantastic. I'm gonna put it down. You know what? I'm gonna put it down directly on top of the pre-existing crafter. We could maybe do with finding a new place to put these, but uh, let's do this and then let's go ahead and teach our system how to make these compressed crafting tables. So this is the first one we need. It's uh, one end steel, four stone crafting tables and four regular crafting tables. We can encode that but we're also going to want to encode regular crafting tables and we're also going to want to encode stone crafting tables as well for the stone crafting tables we need to encode regular stone bricks that's fine let's put all of these up in here and then uh, before i forget let me also go and put the uh, the end steel and the pulverized coal back where it needs to be and you know what let's split the dark steel and the end steel like that so that we can do uh, kind of twice as much smelting at once so back over here that is Basically everything for this taken care of. We should then be able to encode this recipe here. And then from there, I think that's basically it. We only need the uh, double compressed crafting table for the uh, resource generator. So let's do this. And then let's see if we can't make this work. Oh, did I not encode planks? I thought I did, that's fine. Let me quickly encode planks like this. Uh, oh no, I did encode the crafting table. I see, I didn't encode planks, that makes sense. Let me get another pattern. And we could potentially do with encoding a pattern for patterns, so we can just request more patterns. But uh, if we do this recipe here, so our system knows how to turn our logs into planks, we can then place those in here. And it's possible now that we might be able to just request the double compressed crafting table. We do need nine of these, <laughs> nine of those for the ultimate crafting table, and then we need four more. So we really need 13 of these in total. Let's see uh, if we have anywhere near enough. If I want to make one of them, we're good to go. If I want to make nine of them, we're missing 296 stone and we're missing 69 end steel ingots. Now, did I, oh, I didn't collect these up, of course. Did I, I requested more, did I request more crafters? I might not have requested more crafters. Hold on, back down here, I'm getting a little uh, distracted. Get me two more crafters, start. We're gonna put those crafters down over on the segment and the alloy smelter over here. And then once those are down, we should just be able to do something like this to connect these new crafters up to our pre-existing connection. And then that's gonna bring all of these online, which is uh, currently what's stopping us from producing that end steel. Are those crafters done? They are indeed, you love to see it. And so back over here, let's do this and this. And let's of course make sure that points down correctly. Nice, so now that all of those are online, the next problem is definitely going to be end stone. So let me go ahead and well, we'll go ahead and try and request it. We're definitely not gonna have enough here for nine of these. The end stone is gonna be the problem. Yeah, and regular stone, I guess. So regular stone is fine. Over here, we're producing regular stone, just not fast enough, apparently. One thing we can do, of course, is we can go ahead and get another vibrant alloy block and just place that directly on top of the resource generator setup for stone. And that is gonna massively increase the current speed because right now it's uh, 
220 ticks. Yeah, it's 11 seconds. That's going to make this 11 times faster just by having that on top. And so we should get the remaining 200 stone very quickly. As for end stone, that one's going to require a bit more of an involved setup because here we need to take the end stone and I think we need to get one of our alloy smelters here and we kind of need to loop the production of end stone. So right now the sag mill's not doing anything. I'm going to take this sag mill away from here. And what I think I'll do is potentially tweak this a little bit. You know what, actually, no, I'm gonna put this back. I'm gonna put this back here. Let's go bring this back online. I'm gonna make another alloy smelter and I'm gonna put it down over here for our end stone production. Okay, so over here we have our new alloy smelter. We're gonna run power to that. My thought process here is that we can extract from the alloy smelter using the conduit. And the benefit of the conduit system here is that we can round robin the products. And so my thought process is if we set this to extract or we set this to insert, we can put down an exporter, which we'll make in a second, to send stone over here automatically. Then we're gonna take the end stone that we already have and we're gonna place that in here as well. I did make another octatic capacitor. And then from there, all we need to do is just connect this up to our pre-existing uh, power setup. Although that's kind of what this is, <laughs> annoyingly. Uh, you know what, that's fine. Let me go get another energy exporter. I was going to run a cable over to it, but uh, we do have a couple of these uh, omnidirectional connectors spare. So I feel like we might as well just go ahead and make another one of these and get another one of these uh, variable cards. So we can probably just power all this up. I've not used the self feed feature, this one right here. We'll have to give that a try because that might do exactly what I want it to do. But uh, if we do something like this, like this and like this, we can get our power to our alloy smelter. That's gonna make endstone, perfect. We're then gonna extract from there. And I also want to get a storage drawer to actually hold that endstone. So draw wise, we do have a spare drawer here, fantastic. Let's take that, uh, this was our old mineral drawer and uh, we'll place that here. So if we set that to insert, my hope here is that once we set this to always active, it's gonna take the endstone, but it's gonna divvy it up in such a way that there's always endstone in this drawer. It used to be the case that you could set the priority on these cables, although unfortunately, it looks like that's not the case in the uh, the current version of Endio. But it looks like here, yeah, this is working. It looks like we are sending Endstone to both of these. And I do kind of want to test if we can get rid of this, because I think what we should be able to do is set this to insert and extract. And then if we set self feed to enabled, it's quite possible that at that point, it's going to do the same thing, but without that cable on top. So if I do this, is it able to feed Endstone back in here? It totally is. Look at that. So we do end up with endstone in both of these and the round robin should, in theory, kind of divvy this up 50-50 so that half the endstone goes here and half the endstone gets fed back in to produce more endstone, which is perfect. And so now all we need to do is grab an exporter to export stone continuously to that setup. And you'll see here that the system now knows how to make those construction calls. And so if we go ahead and control click, it will just allow us to start requesting the required item, in this case, a construction core, and then boom, we can craft it. Nice. So let's do, oh, I guess let's do this, and then let's connect that up with our cable, like so, and then we can just take some stone from over here, and we can throw that in here. Uh, right now, this is not connected to the system, but using the same trim setup as before, we do already have a, uh, a draw controller down under here that is connecting all of these drawers to our system. And so if we just run a little bit of trim around to this drawer, we should be able to bring the end stone online as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. And you know what? Eight. <laughs> nice. Okay. So our system should now have access to that end stone. It does. And so let's try this. Again, if I wanted nine of these crafting tables, we're just missing stone. Again, that kind of makes sense. The stone is being used over here now as well as elsewhere in the base. And uh, even though it's coming in faster, I guess it's just not fast enough, but we can give that a quick uh, kick in the butt because we do have uh, over 12 hours stored away in our time in the bottle. If we do something like this, we should hopefully start to see the uh, stone coming in nice and quickly. And once we have enough, we can then request those nine crafting tables, start and start. Nice. That is going to take a minute because we do have, of course, a lot of alloying to do over here, but all of this does seem to be working over here. Right now, this is importing somewhat fast enough, although we will look at getting speed upgrades, I think, sooner rather than later. And you can see here, this is why we definitely needed more alloy smelters so that both of these could be going at the same time. Once those are done, though, we should have everything to make the ultimate crafting table. And at that point, we can begin looking at the resource generator here 
that I don't think is going to be too difficult. End steel is easy enough. Diamonds we've got a ton of. The resource generators are just lava and water. They're a bit of a pain to craft with, but they're nothing too difficult. The ultimate crafting table is what we're going to make from these uh, nine double compressed crafting tables. So those are completely fine. And then it's really just a case of getting this much netherite, which could be tricky just due to the fact that I don't know if we have enough netherite scrap. Right now we've got 410 netherite scrap. It takes four netherite and four gold to make one netherite ingot. So in theory, we've got about 100 netherite ingots worth, which is actually fine. It doesn't take 100 netherite to make this uh, resource generator here. Not that we necessarily need this resource generator just yet. This is used to make record fragments and netherite meshes. Basically, we can use this to duplicate record fragments and duplicate uh, unbreaking netherite meshes, which is going to be useful because the record fragments are required, I believe, in the making of the Infinity Catalysts. They are indeed, uh, as are the netherite meshes. So that's why we do need that eventually. But my main goal, as I mentioned before, is going to be to get to the Neutron Collector here, which doesn't seem as bad. The Diamond Lattices, not too bad. And then the Neutron Collector is uh, it's just a bunch of these processors and crafters, which we've already taught our system how to make. And so uh, let's quickly see, is this crafting table craft done? Not quite, we're at six out of nine. Uh, one thing we could do here is we could make a crafting grid. Uh, there's like a crafting, it might be called a monitoring grid actually. Yeah, the crafting monitor here. This thing is pretty cheap. It requires two patterns, and then we can just request our system make almost everything else. The only thing we can't request, apparently, is glass. That is fine, though. We can do something like that, and uh, that glass will make its way back around into the system. The benefit of the crafting monitor is it allows you to keep tabs on what is going on inside of your craft. So you request a craft, and then you're kind of waiting for it to happen. And uh, if you want to check on what you're currently waiting for, you can use the, uh, the crafting monitor to tell you what it is that you're missing. And so in here, you can see that uh, we're currently waiting on coal by the looks of it, which seems unlikely. We are, it looks like the uh, the problem here might just be, oh, the problem here, of course, is that I'm a fool. The whole reason why, the, the reason why this mechanical um, squeezer is off to the side is that we actually need to put a import pipe on the bottom here like that so that we can extract from the bottom like this. And then now it's gonna pull out the coal and everything should come together. And there we go, nine double compressed crafting Aww. tables. The only downside to the way we've just done it is that uh, we don't get the uh, quest completion here. So um, I will go ahead and request one of the first tier of compressed crafting tables again. This one hopefully is uh, the faster of the two to produce. And uh, hopefully once that's done, we can complete two quest lines at once, fantastic. We can then do something like this to get the ultimate crafting table. And then from there, it looks like we do have to upgrade this with eight hoppers, which we're going to have to do with some chests. That's fine. Let's get a stack of chests. We've got loads of wood. That's fine. And let's go ahead and make at least eight hoppers here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, those iron chickens paying dividends with over a thousand iron. And if we go ahead and do something like this, it's going to get us the ultimate auto crafting table, which is what we need to make the resource generator tier two. So we'll take this. And now, in terms of making that uh, ultimate resource generator tier two, we do need four more double compressed crafting tables, and we need a bunch of netherite. But for the most part, that seems kind of fine. Netherite-wise, I think the alloy smelter is the way to go, right? It is. And so, once again, I think we probably want to look at teaching our system how to make that. So let's do a few more of these. We are going to need way more glass as well, but thankfully we did just smelt some up. And so, netherite ingot, let's do this in code and we'll place that down over in here. And so now if we go and request however much netherite we need for this resource generator, the non two version, we need what, five, 10, 15, 20 plus three, six, nine, 12. So I think we need 32 netherite. Let's see, let's get a stack just to be safe. While we're waiting for that, let's pivot and look at uh, these diamond lattices. So, uh, oh, of course, this is where we need the, um, the ultimate crafting table. Interesting. So I might hold off then in that case on making the resource generator until we need the record fragments and the netherite meshes. And instead, we can probably use the ultimate crafting table that we currently have for some of these other recipes. So let's go ahead and place this down like here. And this is just a giant nine by nine, 81 slot crafting grid that we can use to craft different recipes. For example, the next recipe we want to craft here is the diamond lattice. This is made with end steel bars and diamond meshes. So if we want to get that, how many diamond meshes do I need here? I need eight diamond meshes and then I need five, 10, 15, 16, 17 end steel bars by the looks of it. Can I get like a stack of end steel? I can, let's request that. 
As far as the uh, diamond meshes goes, those really should not be a problem. We could, of course, teach our system how to make the diamond meshes as well. And you know what? We have space. Let's make it happen. Diamond mesh. I do also think that there's going to come a point. Uh, we should also teach our system how to make sticks as well. And I'll do that with the logs. I think that's a better recipe to teach it. But um, I do think we can probably get rid of these patterns soon. We are going to need four more of these double compressed crafting tables to get the resource generator. But... Once we have that, I don't think we need these again, so we can probably kind of get rid of those patterns and free up some space. As far as the diamond meshes are concerned, give me like 32 of those. That's more than we need, of course, but I think we're going to need a lot of neutron collectors. Like a lot of neutron collectors, I think are going to be required to make this work. Everything else here doesn't seem too bad. We do need a fair number of advanced and improved processors, and uh, we do also need five crafters, was it? Yeah, five crafters in the middle here. So processor-wise, let's see if we can't request, that'd be 32 of these. No, again, silicon is our bottleneck. We could go ahead and tap on our silicon chicken a little bit. Requires seeds. Is that not set to insert? Have I been a fool? I have been a fool. There we go. That is why that is not working. That is my bad. Hopefully, now we're going to see our silicon coming in a fair bit faster. Still got 11 hours on our time in the bottle, so we could probably go a little bit faster on that and really try and get those seeds coming in. There we go. Now we're going to get silicon coming in faster. Back over here, let's try that again. Can I get 32 of these advanced processes? I can, and can I get 32 of these guys? I can, nice. That might take a little bit of time, mostly because it's gonna wait on uh, the printed silicon here, I think, but for the most part, that seems like it's gonna do the job just fine. How are we doing up here? Again, you can see all of the uh, different crafts being taken care of, and you'll see that this uh, end steel is almost done, and so once we have a full stack of end steel, we should then be able to start the crafting of those end steel bars i'm not quite sure why that's stopped with three to go although it's possible yeah we just need to get some speed upgrades into our importer or maybe even a stack upgrade honestly into the importer to make it much much faster than it currently is that should be fine at this point we have the ability to make a lot of those improved processes but we are kind of waiting for those to come in that again is completely fine let's do this and let's start making these end steel bars that's loads of them good stuff and then in here I think we had something like this, like this, like this, like this, and like that. And I think we had three, three, and two in the middle there of the uh, diamond meshes. So let's go ahead and take, hopefully, at least eight diamond meshes. And then in here, we can go one, two. Actually, I think we can shift click this recipe in. Let me quickly do this. Look at that. Boom. Eight diamond lattices. Nice. Now for the crystal matrix ingot, we need even more and steel ingots along with vibrant crystals and pulsating crystals. So I think, again, this is one of those situations where we're going to want to teach our system how to make these because going forward, we're going to need so many of them. We can also teach our system how to make stuff using the ultimate auto crafting table, but you can really only teach it one recipe at a time. And so it's quite possible we might want to set up multiple of these um, ultimate auto crafting tables so that we can automate this recipe maybe automate this recipe and then potentially automate this recipe although i don't know it's really going to depend on how slow these neutron collectors are and just how many neutronium ingots we need so i think what we'll do is we'll make our first batch of neutron collectors and then we can do some kind of back of the napkin math to figure out just how many of them we're going to need or just how much time we're going to need to get all of the uh, neutronium ingots. And then at that point, if it turns out we need, you know, a hundred of these neutron collectors, then of course we might look at getting automation set up. But if it turns out that we need like 16 of them, then maybe we'll just do this craft four times and, uh, and we might be good to go. So how are we doing up here? Those processes are done. Let's go ahead and get at least five crafters, start and start. Uh, the processes, yep, completely done, fantastic. What else are we missing? Oh, real quick, let's do that. Um, encoding of the crystals. So crystal wise, we need a pulsating crystal and we need the vibrant crystal. Both of those are gonna require that we teach our system how to craft the ingots down into nuggets. Although that's not necessarily the case. I think it might be. It's possible that if we got a compacting draw for our vibrant alloy and for our pulsating alloy, that that might not be true, but I think the refined storage system is not going to know that ahead of time. And so I do think we want to teach it all four of these recipes, which means we do want to take one of our crafters here and then uh, quickly request a, another crafter so we can fill its place and kind of place that down up here. And of course, just for aesthetic sake, let's do something like that and like this. And then let's see how many of those do I need? I need five, 10 of the vibrant crystals and I need three, seven of the pulsating crystals. Okay, hit me with 
10, and 10. We're missing pulsating iron. In that case, we have to teach our system how to make pulsating iron. That's not a problem. Uh, it's something I thought we'd already done, but I guess not. And for that, of course, more patterns are required. Probably, like I said, a good idea to teach the patterns to the patterns. And uh, for that, we're going to teach our system how to make glass as well, which would involve sending sand automatically to one of these alloy smelters. For now, we can do that manually, of course. And it looks like we're doing okay on the import speed for the time being. So not going to have to worry about that just yet. Let's do a few more of these. Let's do this. Let's encode this. Let's place that into yet another alloy smelter. This one right here will do just fine. That's doing sand. And at this point, we should now hopefully be able to request the crystals. I would like 10 of these and start. These are done. Fantastic. In here, let me check the recipe again for that uh, crystal matrix ingot. It requires the four diamond lattices. Again, we do have uh, eight of those. You make eight at a time, which is very nice indeed. And so we'll do one, two, three, four. I think that might be right. No, it's not correct. I think it's like this. We then need the uh, end steel, of course, which we have. That's going to go across the top and the bottom. Like, wait, that's also not correct. Hold on. Oh, no, this goes here, 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 and here. That it is end stone along the top and bottom, I believe, like this. And then we just need to get the uh, the crystals, which I do believe we also have. Boom, boom, and boom. Nice. We've got eight crystal matrix ingots. And it only takes four crystal matrix ingots to make the neutron collector. And so this should be kind of fine. We have the redstone blocks. We can take those out of here and we can put them in. Uh, let me bookmark the recipe that we're actually doing, which is the neutron collector, this one right here. So those are gonna go in the middle with our five crafters, which we do also have. Let me grab those. Those are gonna go in the five center slots like this. And then we have around those, the redstone blocks, the full ring of end steel around the outside is a lot of end steel. Let me go and see about getting another stack of that stuff. Perfect. Again, the stone and the end stone all coming in real fast. Now, obsidian is probably the next thing that's going to be our limiting factor. We do need eight blocks of quartz enriched iron. Please tell me that I set up my quartz enriched iron correctly. I did. We have enough to make just enough, <laughs> 11 blocks. Although if we do want to make a second batch of these, we're going to need more of that. Uh, that's, I believe, here, 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 and here. And then from there... We could take our processes, which we also have. These guys and these guys. I think 20 is, is fine. And it looks like those kind of go here, 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 and here with the improved processes going here, 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 and here. Good stuff. Then it's crystal matrix ingots in the middle like this. And then I think it's basically redstone in the remaining slots here like that. I believe that looks correct. Oh, no, it's not. This one, this one, this one, and this one are tier two resource generators, which we'll get in a second. As for our end ingots, those are ready to go. Let's do this. And now we're just missing those resource generators. Now, I do believe there's a better way of us making those resource generators, utilizing the, uh, the fluid crafting capabilities of refined storage. But for this first craft, we only need four of them. So we got one, two, three more of those. And then let's do... One, two, three, four of those. Uh, and that should be everything that we need for four more of these resource generators. One, two, three, and it looks like we're missing one bucket. That's because I didn't have the inventory spares. Okay, fine. And four. Nice. And with that, chat, I believe we have everything we need. One, two, three, four to craft this insane recipe for the four neutron collectors. And now we can use these to produce the neutron dust. So we'll take these and where we put them is a good question. Let's set them up over here, I think. If we place down our draw, I'm gonna put the draw down like here, I think, because I believe that we're going to need a lot of these neutron collectors. And I'm fairly certain that we should just be able to do something like this and set these to extract. So look at that. It's producing a tiny pile of neutronium dust very slowly. So if we type in neutronium here, these collectors don't require any power. They don't require anything at all. They just passively generate neutronium piles. Nine of these neutronium piles can be made into a neutronium ingot, and then nine of those neutronium nuggets make a neutronium ingot. And so we need 81 neutronium piles per neutronium ingot, and you'll see it takes a while. It takes about two seconds per percent 
by the looks of it here. So we need 200 seconds, about just over three minutes per dust. You can time in a bottle it, of course. We can take the time in a bottle that we have and we can, uh, I think, do this to make it faster. Yeah, it's much quicker. And then presumably we can do this, 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 and this to pull those out into the framed drawer here. But even if I pumped all 11 and a half hours that I have, it's going to take a while. We'll, of course, lock this and you'll see that it makes it available in all three forms. And so now once we have nine piles, we'll be able to make one nugget. And once we have nine nuggets, we could pull out one ingot. And as I mentioned before, the question now is how many of the ingots do we need? And I think the answer is a lot. So we did some calculations last time. And I think we need about 80 infinity ingots in total. And these alone do require neutronium ingots and neutronium nuggets. But on top of that, for every infinity ingot, you need one infinity catalyst. It's uh, five infinity catalysts to five infinity ingots. And these do also require neutronium piles, and they also require neutronium gears, which of course require neutronium ingots. Now you do get nine of these gears at a time, uh, but unfortunately it does take two, four, six, oh no, eight. Okay, so it's um one craft basically per infinity catalyst. And again, it's one infinity catalyst per ingot. And so if we need 80 infinity ingots, we need 80 infinity catalysts, which means we need to do this recipe 80 times. And uh, this recipe alone requires what, six times 424 of these neutronium ingots. And so 24 multiplied by the 80 is 1,920 neutronium ingots. That doesn't include the fact that we've got what, three, six, eight here. Eight here plus again, uh, we don't quite have to multiply this by 80. We only have to multiply this by 16 because you get five at a time. So it's gonna be a lot. We need basically a full draws worth of these neutronium piles. And so I do think that we're going to want to get a couple more of these neutronium collectors, maybe even kind of fill in this area here with neutronium collectors to allow us to, uh, to kind of get them at a, uh, at a faster rate. And of course, chat is right here that the armor also requires neutronium ingots. Every single piece of armor requires neutronium ingots and the pickaxe as well, neutronium ingots. So we definitely are gonna want to get way more of these neutron collectors. And so I think it's probably gonna be worthwhile getting more of these crafting tables. Let me see here, if I request another nine of these, do we have what it takes? We don't, but again, it's just stone that we're missing. Stone surprisingly becoming uh, our limiting factor. We are walking very slowly here. Let me quickly go and uh, charge up my leggings and then let's uh, see if we can't get another auto crafting table made. And then we'll look at actually automating the uh, the crafting with our current auto crafting table. Pause. All right, try that again, start and start. That's gonna make us another nine of these to get another one of these. So. The idea here is that if you want to automate with this crafting table, uh, you do need the auto version, which we have, and then you can place a, a chest on top like so. And if, for example, we wanted to automate this recipe here, we just have to put the end steel bars and the diamond meshes into this chest after we've taught the table how to craft it. So I have the end steel bars. How many diamond meshes do we have? We've got loads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In here, I am gonna go ahead and basically recreate that recipe. So it's five, five, and then it's like this, and like this with this here, I believe. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and in a second, we're gonna go and put the eighth one here. Oh, actually, this is fine. And so if we want to automate it up here, shift left click to save the recipe, and then left click again to select the recipe. So now, if I take all of this out, you'll see that this recipe is saved to this table. And so now if I put the required items into this top chest, what we should see happen is it should pull them down into here. The reason it's not doing it currently, I believe, is because we don't have any power going into this table. So obviously if you're doing it manually, no power is required. However, if you want to do it automatically, that is where the power is necessary. So if I were to, Go ahead and do something like this. You get the gist with this guy. And then of course we put in the variable card and we put down the power. We should see it pull all the items in and it should complete the craft automatically. Look at that, it's gonna to toggle and it's gonna complete it. Perfect. So with that in mind, what we can do is we can move this. Cause I'm not gonna leave it here, of course. Uh, we'll take this away. And I do believe we're gonna have to import from the bottom there, but that's fine. And uh, what we should be able to do is kind of just take this away and basically just put a crafter onto this chest. So if I were to go ahead and request like another five crafters here, start and start, over here, we could once again place down the crafting table. And you know what, we've got space on the back here. Let's put it down right about here. Let's make sure, of course, that none of these 
item pipes go in there because I don't want that. Power is being sent over from here, which is good. We can place this chest on like that. And then if we go and grab one of those crafters that we just requested, we can then place that down anywhere as long as it's pointing at this chest. In fact, we could do it like this, for example. That does work. And it also allows us to connect to our pre-existing setup. And then from there, we just want to make sure we have a um, an extraction. Although I do think that you don't have to extract from the bottom of this. So I think that actually, even though I just disconnected this, I think we can do this and this, and that should just work just fine. Thankfully, this did save its um, recipe here, which is good. But now back over here in our pattern grid, can I shift click in the recipe for the diamond lattices? I kind of can, but not really. So <laughs> I think what we want to do here, let's clear that out. I think what we want to do is we want to grab a diamond mesh and place it in here. And then can I change the amount? I can. So if I click on it, I can change. Oh, I can't change the amount. Okay, never mind. I'm wrong on this. It uh, has a score bar here on the right hand side. Interesting. Okay, so when you shift click it in, it does work. It looks a little janky, <laughs> but it does work. Usually with items that you can stack, you can uh, click and then you can change the number like this. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't work with the diamond meshes here. I think this is fine though. I'm going to trust in it. I'm going to click in code and let's take it over to here. Let's put this in like that and let's give this a try. So over here, if we type in uh, lattice, we have four. Let's take them out. If I want to request just one, it's going to make a set of eight. It says it needs 17. Is 17 the right number there? I think that's right. 5, 10, uh, 15, 16, 17 is correct. Start. And if we go check over here, of course, it's going to make the bars and everything, but we should see, look at that. It's going to craft it, and then it's going to pull them out, send them around to here, and then those are going to get imported. And we've done it. We've automated the diamond lattice. Nice. Now, the crafting table does have three recipe slots that you can use, but I believe you can only have one of them selected at any given time. And so for all intents and purposes, you can basically just use one auto crafting table per recipe. And so I think what we want to do now is kind of do the exact same thing that we've just done there, but for the crystal matrix ingots. So we'll get another auto crafting table, which again, we should be able to do now that we've got nine more of these guys. We can just do this and then craft that with uh, eight hoppers to make it auto. Let's request another nine of these though. Start and of course we're missing stone. We'll go and speed that up again with the time in a bottle. There we go to get enough stone. Once we've requested another nine of those, then we can make another auto crafting table and we could potentially use that to automate this. The only thing that we don't have the ability to automate here currently is the resource generator mark two. We can of course teach our system how to make the um, blocks of quartz and each time. That's not gonna be difficult at all. And uh, again, the crystal matrix ingots are not bad either. And yeah, let me do that. Let me go ahead and request 10 more of these. Am I telling me nine like that? Let me get two more auto crafting tables set up. We'll go and duplicate the same setup we have currently, one for crystal matrix ingots and one for the neutron collectors. And then we'll come back and we'll look at automating these resource generator tier twos because I don't think they're going to be that difficult. All right, so we have our three ultimate crafting tables down. Each one has a chest above it and each one has a crafter pointing at that chest. This one has a pattern for the diamond lattice. This one has a pattern for the crystal matrix ingots. And this one has a pattern for the neutron collector. Now, these two are set up and ready to go. They don't have power, which is uh, something we can fix very quickly by just running some cable under here. We do have the power cable ready to go. And so if we just do boom, boom, and boom, that's gonna get power to all of those. And that's gonna start crafting these ingots. Perfect. And we do have them set to extract on the side. So that's all good. This one here is not set up. And that's of course, because we don't have the resource generators. So if I go to request a neutron collector, my assumption here is that we have everything apart from the resource generator. That's almost true. <laughs> we uh, we do need to get, I just clicked X there, but we do need to get a few more of these blank patterns because I do need to teach my system ideally how to make the uh, quartz enriched iron blocks like this. Um, although again, probably not necessary actually. I'm gonna cancel that. Shift right click by the way to uh, clear a pattern. What will make more sense is just to put the quartz enriched iron into its own compacting drawer which we should hopefully have space for over here. We do indeed, boom. And then now that's gonna be available to the system in block form. So we don't have to do that manually going forward and don't have to have the system do it either. Let's do something like this, just because I think we're going to need more quartz enriched iron than what we currently have. And back over here, we can now focus on those resource generators because now those are the only thing preventing us from auto crafting this setup. So I believe that we can teach our system how to craft the resource generator tier twos like this and encode. Now this requires a bucket of lava and a bucket of water, but 
I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that we can take tanks. Uh, let me make another small fluid tank here, ideally two of them. And you know what, let's upgrade those to medium if we can. Do we have enough? Oh, we need uh, two tanks per tank, I see, that's fine. Boom, and boom. So these are two tanks that can hold 64 buckets each of ideally lava and water. So if we go ahead and place these down, let's say here and here, I think what we should be able to do is put lava and water into those and then place external storages onto them. So for that, let's go ahead and get more of these, which shouldn't take too, too long. Fantastic. And then ideally we do that one more time, start and start. And we're going to put these down, I guess, here and here. We can't really put them in the middle because I don't think you can put two of them in the same block space, unfortunately. But uh, let's take this and then let's do something like this and like this. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that if I put water into here, that should allow the system to use that water for the craft. To make it work, you need to open up the external storage and on the left-hand side, change it from type items to type fluids. And you'll see now that it shows that the water is available. If I type water in here, it doesn't show there. I think we would need a fluid grid to actually see the water that we have available, but I'm pretty sure that is accessible to the system. And if we do the same with lava, let's say we take one bucket worth of lava here and let's put it into this tank and we'll do the same thing. We'll set this to fluids. Now in here, we currently don't have any buckets of lava, but if I go and try and request a resource generator, start and it's not gonna work, Okay, so unfortunately this does not work. I think there might have been an add-on mod that allowed this to work at some point, um, and this might work with applied logistics, I'm not sure, but unfortunately this doesn't work. Um, I thought that um, with this in place, it would just auto do the craft, even though we don't have the buckets because the liquid is available in here, but apparently not the case. That is unfortunate, but we don't really need that many resource generators and they're not too difficult to make. So what I think we might do instead then, we could do like a convoluted system where we send buckets to the the tanks and we have the tanks fill up with lava from a, a fluid generator and, and, and all that. But I think what probably makes more sense is just to kind of go and fill up our lava generator here, which we can of course do, you know, like this. We can fill up our lava tank uh, very quickly. That's got some lava in it. Can I take, there we go, 16 buckets of lava out. And then we can also go ahead and take 16 buckets of water uh, somewhat quickly. If we do this, we can just kind of do something like that. What we'll probably do here, and again, you wanna make sure you're not shifting so you don't waterlog the thing. But um, what we will probably do is set up some more water and lava generators, place them in such a way that they feed into these tanks. And then whenever we need the resource generators, I think it's honestly just going to be quickest for us to just pick up the two tanks like this, go to the crafting grid and just craft the resource generators because it's possible, I'm hoping, that we can do this craft here with this and this. You can't, that is really unfortunate. Okay, in that case then, we might have to set up some kind of convoluted system involving buckets because the alternative now is to make just a bunch of buckets and then use those to kind of grab all of the lava and all of the water and then do all of this manually, which is, is much less enticing than the initial setup. Once we have done all the crafting, it's somewhat easy to craft these down, but it's still a little bit tedious. Let me get four, let me put that in, and then let's go ahead and see about requesting the next batch of neutron collectors and start. That should start requesting all the items and should send them all over to here. Once we have them all over in this chest, we can then uh, teach this ultimate crafting table how to actually craft them into neutronium collectors. And then that's basically good to go at that point. All we need to do is actually figure out this setup. So what we can do for sure here is you can automatically send, whoops, let me get this wrench back in my backpack. You can automatically send buckets to these tanks, right? So if there's lava in here, we could have a crafter send a bucket to here, that fills it with lava, and then we can pull it out. That's probably just the best way for us to do it. So if we were to put these down, and again, I'm gonna put them down over here just because we have all of our stuff over here. So if we do lava and water, we can then take two more crafters, place those onto the tanks, and then just encode recipes that teach our system how to make the, uh, the buckets of lava and the buckets of water. In this scenario, we'd go processing and we just say bucket equals lava bucket encode. And we just say bucket equals water bucket encode. And then we place both of those in over here. And then I'm gonna put the uh, fluid generators on top of both of these with some vibrant alloy blocks to make it nice and quick. And then that's gonna allow us to um, hopefully 
produce what we need. We've already told our system how to make the resource generator, so it's going to try and make it. When it realizes it doesn't have the buckets, it should just send buckets here and here to get the water and the lava required, and then it should do the recipe. The leftover buckets should just sit in the system, and then it'll do the same again. All right, so we've made some changes to this setup because it turns out that the pneumaticraft tanks are not that good, um, unfortunately, at least not for this specific setup. Because if you put one bucket in, you get a bucket of lava. Perfect. However, if you put multiple buckets in, let's say I put 15 in, it doesn't do anything. You don't even get any buckets of lava, despite the fact that it could fill two buckets here. It just doesn't work. Thankfully, that's not the case with the Ender IO tanks. So here and here. Over here, we have these Ender IO tanks. They are super easy to make. It is just iron, glass, and more iron in the form of bars. Over here, if I put some iron in like this, and we put in a bunch of buckets over here, this will just make one bucket at a time, which is exactly what we want. The problem with the NYO tank though, it has its own problem, is that by default, when you try and put an item in here, so when our crafter puts an item in, it's gonna put it into this slot, which is the slot that kind of puts stuff into the tank, not takes it out. We want it to go into this slot here, so it gets turned into lava. We can make this force its way into this slot though, if we put something in this slot. So if we put a tank in here, now, when I put a bucket in here, it goes into the right slot. Again, a little silly, but it does work. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put a, uh, a tank in here. That's going to empty it out. We can put it back in the top. We're going to do the same over here. This one's going to be for water. And we're then going to put down our crafters, which I do have. And so let's do something, I guess, like this and like this. We're going to rotate both of these to face into the tank like that. And then we want to put water in here and of course lava in up here. So that should start producing lava and water and placing them into the tanks, ideally. It does. Of course, we're going to want to put some vibrant alloy blocks and we're probably also going to want to get uh, more of the, uh, the fluids to make that work. In fact, what I'll probably do is move these uh, crafters. I'll probably put them on the side like this just because that way, if we do want to get more lava or water going, we can add floppers on this side. We can just add like more and more fluid crafters and more and more floppers to pump more and more lava and water in. And uh, that's not possible with the crafters in their current place. So let's do this as well. Make sure we rotate that to face the right way. Fantastic. And at that point though, we should be basically good to go. Now we need to put the patterns into both of these and of course, make sure they're connected up, which should be fairly straightforward. If we do this, 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 and this, it's a little bit janky, but it gets the job done. Over here, it should just be a case of doing this. And then the only other thing we need to do is make sure that this here is set to extract like that. And then we just need to do the same thing with this guy. And so for that, actually, I might go ahead and break this and this so that we can run item cable here and here to connect up the other crafter as well. So we can actually pull those buckets out and use them to make our resource generators. Do we have any more item conduits? We do indeed. Let's place those down over here. Boom, boom, and boom. Okay, over here, we do finally have all the items required to make the uh, the neutron compressor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out the items that we need. Down here, we should be able to shift click this in. We can, uh, shift left click up here, left click to lock the recipe, and boom, we're gonna make four more of those neutron compressors. I can then take all of these back. And did we, I don't believe we made the patterns for Wait, I, th I think we did make the patterns. Let me type in pattern here. Yeah, I was gonna say, I thought I made the patterns for the lava and the water bucket. Let me go and put those into their respective crafters. So over here, lava, over here, water. And now is the real test because now, if we try to get more neutron collectors, can we do it? If I want another batch, the system is confident that we have the capability to make another batch. Start and start. So we should see buckets being placed into here again water wise i don't think we have enough water currently or enough lava for that matter we can use either netherite blocks or vibrant alloy blocks to do this at this point in time uh netherite is the resource we have more of and so i guess we can go ahead and make two of those and place those directly above our lava and water and like i said uh, between streams i'll probably look at um adding more fluid generators to make this faster because it's almost certainly not going to be fast enough. But hopefully this works and hopefully this allows us to produce as many of these neutron collectors as we need. One, two, three, four, we'll place those down. I'm going to pick them back up again because I want to make sure they all face the same way. Annoying, you know what? I'm, I guess I'm never picking them up <laughs> because they, um, they seemingly don't get picked up 
fine. In that case, then they're staying as they are. One, two, three, four. Let's go ahead and one, two, three, four. In the time that it took us to get all of that taken care of, we have five nuggets. Can I rotate them with the wrench? I can. Okay, perfect. Good. Uh, in the time it took us to do that, though, we got five nuggets. We need a ton of nuggets. And so we'll leave this going. At some point, I might have to look at um, potentially just chunk loading the, uh, the little area that these are in to keep them going between uh, streams so that we don't have to wait just a trillion years. But next time, we'll come back. Hopefully, we'll have more of them. Between streams, I'll just keep crafting these and, uh, and place more of them down. Next time, we'll come back and we'll look at setting up some automation for the infinity catalysts. Uh, we do want to make sure we can get, of course, the resource generator here to duplicate netherite catalysts. We want to set up the automation for the gears so we can make those. We need to work on these singularities. We need to work on these singularities that are different to these singularities uh, as well as stuff like the star fuel here and whatnot. But uh, it doesn't seem too difficult. I think it's definitely doable. Uh, it's a lot of crafting, but I think it is possible. Uh, and I also think that it's a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Desertopolis there.